Wakey wakey. Hello, good morning. Another beautiful day, 30th of May 2024. And I'm glad that you're joining us here on Morning Prime. Today is a special day because it's a national prayer breakfast day. And uh, we'll not really have a lot of activity here in the studio. Our eyes will be focused and fixated on Safari Park, where we have the event which is, of course, bound to be happening from 7 o'clock moving forward. And uh, we have our reporters on the ground who will be giving us a wall-to-wall -wall live, of course, live coverage from there. And uh, we'll be also training our focus on what will be happening on that particular front. This, year's, this is actually the 21st National Prayer Breakfast and it's running under the theme Hope. Hope is what is the theme for this prayer breakfast. I just wanted also to give you a snippet of it of what the program looks like today uh, so that you can actually have an inkling of what to expect today. And as I try and retrieve that for you, we have also ambassadors who have been invited for that particular event today. Of course, it will be presided over by President William Ruto, uh, who will be taking us through that particular event today. We'll have also the National Parliament Choir. Uh, we'll have welcoming remarks from Honorable Samuel Chepkonga, who is a member of Parliament, and Abkoy, and he's a co-chair, actually, of uh, the National Prayer Breakfast. Also, Daniel uh, Manzo, the Senator of Makuweni as well, who is a co-chair. Opening prayer will be by Honorable Clement Wambugu, former chairman of the Kenya National Prayer Breakfast. I also will have a welcoming message from Honorable Emerson Jaffa Kingi, and, uh, who is a speaker of the Senate and co-patron of the National Prayer Breakfast. Scripture reading from the Holy Bible. We'll have uh, Onesimus Ngongoyo, MP Kajero North, also um, Philemon Sabule, uh, who is a speaker at Elgo Marakwet County Assembly and also the CAF uh, chairman. And I'll give you the rest of the details moving forward so that at least uh, you can know what to expect today. But let's, let's see how the weather will be today, which is up next.
All right, and uh, this is what you have in the publications today. Fresh off the press is the standard today, UDA's war of words. Implosion brews. A stand warning by UDA Secretary General Cleopas Malala to politicking cabinet secretaries and warring politicians from factions allied to both President William Ruto and his deputy Rigati Gashagwa has triggered a vicious intra-party battle that is threatening to implode the ruling party as leaders tread words and you have some of the sentiments here I'll try and zoom in so that we can read together Cleofus Malala UDA Secretary General he said quote unquote your recent conduct not only undermines the party's unity but also disrespects the leadership that you pledged to serve. Let this be a stern warning. Desist from such actions with immediate effect. Also, we have sentiments from Moses Courier Public Service CS saying, I know he, that is Malala, is being used to poke holes in me, but I will not respond. Let the country keep up with my major political announcement on August the 20th. From then onwards, it will not be business as usual, right? That is, you can mark your calendar, August the 20th, that is August 20th, will be the biggest day for Moses Courier, where we might be having another earthquake announcement there that is going to change the political tectonics in this country. So we'll keep our eyes peeled. That is Moses Courier. Oscar Sudi, Kapsereta MP, he says Malala is an elevated MCA suffering from illusory superiority thinking he matches Rafael Tuju's caliber. Also, we have Matai Kagi Kahiga Shulse, Nyeri Governor, saying, acting CH Malala in UDA is like a square peg in a round hole. He doesn't fit. I have said it before, and I repeat, we must get rid of him in the coming UDA elections. All right, those are sentiments, and you can see what is happening within UDA right now. Uh, this is an implosion of UDA, and those are sentiments from members of UDA. UDA's words of word, I mean, war of words, it seems it's a Tower of Babel there. You can grab a copy of a standard to get all the gritty details. Ruto's masterstroke on DP as he slashes confidential votes. Uh, that is uh, austerity measures. President uh, William Ruto, 800 million shillings amount. President Ruto will lose from 14 billion shillings confidential vote to 600. A million shillings. Also, Deputy President Rigathi Kashagwa, 880 million shillings a month. DP Rigathi Kashagwa will lose from 1.2 billion votes to 320 million shillings. Also, we have 150 million. That is what Prime Cabinet Secretary Musale Madavadi will lose from 300 million shillings vote to 150. Half has been slashed. 60 million. Amount Chief of Staff Felix Koske will lose from 100 million votes to 40 million. Uh, that is all about the austerity measures. All right, I don't want to print it. But you can follow the story inside on page six. Clinicians strike in, all clinicians strike is on until 3.5 billion shillings. They get it, that is what they say. Clinical officers union say their members who are on their 58th day on strike will not relent until they also get 1 billion shillings health risk allowance. That is on page 7 of the publication today. Also, Inshuara Jubilee declares record 1 billion shillings dividend. The firm says it will pay shareholders a record 1 shilling and 36 uh, billion shillings compared to 869.6 million shillings that it is that it paid a year ago. So you can follow the story on page 24 of the standard today. Also, SRC lacks powers to set salaries on its own. Court rules it is illegal for salaries team to come up with its own or with own criteria of needs and then decide the pay for public officers. That is the story that you want to follow on page 9 of the publication today. Looking on the teaser on top, vaccine shortage hits infants had a made funding cuts. That is on page two and three of a standard and high stakes in Haiti mission. High stakes in Haiti mission. That story on page 18 of the standard ANC tests as South Africa goes to polls. That is on page 27. The counting has begun. And of course, we'll be able to know sooner who is the president. Kenyans, I glory in Oslo. That is on page 39 of the publication today. UDA's war of words is a splash. 
UDA in Tamworth is what is a splash on the front page of the Daily Nation today. Things fall apart. That is what the flag is reading here. Deputy President Gashagwa denies claims of scouting for a new political party. The divide, the president, uh, William Ruto's party is fast becoming another Tower of Babel as infighting. Reminiscent of the discord that plagued the Jubilee outfit during President Kenyatta's administration escalates. Yesterday, UDA Secretary General Cleopas Malala intensified the war of words by demanding the resignation of outspoken cabinet secretaries Kipchuba, Mulkrumen, and Moses Kuria over the political activities. And some of the sentiments here, as published by the Daily Nation, I can flag them up for us to read together. Uh, together, Kashago says some politicians around the president want to meddle in Mount Kenya politics to fight me. Central Kenya politics is so complicated and we hate betrayal. As Mount Kenya, we have never interfered with Rift Valley politics and we deserve respect. Cleopas Malala, Cabinet Secretaries Moses Kuria and Kipchuma Murkumen have been engaging in political activities contrary to the law, which requires them to remain apolitical. Mutai Kaiga. He says the feeble attempts at fighting regarding Kashago will ultimately bring the mountain together and keep the mountain solidly behind him. Moses Kuria, I don't agree with the Greg Kashagwa. I don't agree with Rigadi Kashagwa. Solutions to the country's problems have no forwarding address. Nothing like, quote unquote, if you have a problem, go to so and so. Who are you? That's a probing question he's asking. Oscar Sudi, you cannot control where I go. If all if we all stayed in our constituencies, we will not be in government. We had to fly all over the country to ask Kenyans to elect this government. And Sakaja, you cannot bully people for two years and start crying just after being mentioned in one week until you go hiding in the bush. Bullies are the biggest cowards. All right, Kipchumba Murkum, Murkumani says, as a cabinet secretary, I don't respond to political statements. All right, that is on page four and five, where you have all the greedy details of this. And annual meeting assemblies, this is President William Ruto, and, uh, the, and head of state and government, posing for a photo during the 24th annual meeting of African Development Bank Group at the Kenyatta International Convention Center. In Nairobi yesterday, the African leaders noted that institutional reforms and easier credit terms uh, the twin solutions to incessant crises. You have a story on page 10 of the publication today. Nat Kupet in battle for JSS teachers. Two teachers unions are embroiled in a silent battle to entice junior school teachers to join or to join them in a bid to increase their membership. The 39,550 teachers deployed to JSS will boost the membership of any new union and also contribute significant amount of money in monthly union dues to the organization. That is a story that you want to follow on the back page of the Daily Nation today. This is how it looks also, how the billions changed the game. That is on CDF and finance bill. Parliament begins public hearing on proposals. Also, why green gold ban has sparked a storm. The recent ban on Muguka trade in Mombasa and Kilifi counties threaten significant revenue losses and jeopardizes the livelihoods of those invested in this industry. You have a story on page 13 of the publication today and also opposition fights and seen court and on ballot, that is uh, elections of South Africa. And soon, Chapati and Mandazi are set to rise. That is the prizes. And uh, the flag reads finance bill, price hike to be occasioned by the proposed 25% excess duty on edible oils. Price of 20 litre cooking oil to jump from 4,046 to 6,737 if law enacted. The other story on page 4 and 5 of the Star today. And implosion in UDA as President's men squabble in public gatherings on page 7. And Badare, new look after repair and demolitions. This is how it looks right now. And political lockout or politicians locked out of parastatal boards in new proposal or new proposed law. Let me try and zoom in, we'll read it together. It says that uh, election losers and political actors could soon be locked out of appointments to lucrative parastatals in a proposed law. A new bill by President William Ruto's administration, if implemented, will see politicians kicked out of the directorship of parastatals. You have a story on page six of the Star today. Clinical officers strike enters 
day 60 with no ending or no end in sight patients in public hospitals will continue to miss critical services of clinical officers after the medics vowed to push on with their strike which enters its 60th day today the medics say they will not resume work until the government addresses their grievances you have a story on page two of the publication today gmo maize cassava potatoes ready for market says agency the national biosafety authority says it is working on 42 varieties of gmo crops and that maize cassava and potatoes are ready for introduction to the market once a petition pending in court is determined there are four petitions against lifting of the ban of gmos and that is a story that you want to follow inside the star today also we just showed you the land reclamation there how madare is looking currently by charlie staring at debris of buildings demolished by the government in madare for being on repairing land uh, yesterday also a structure under construction is surrounded by debris of raised property in Tasia Riverbank Estate in Nairobi yesterday. This is what is on top here. But there are a new look after repair and demolition. You can follow the story inside the publication today. Storm in Ruto Party is what is on the front page of the People Daily today. Gloves off. UDA Secretary General Cleopas Malala reads riot act to defiant ministers and other leaders seen to undermine Deputy President Gadi Gashagwa and threatens unspecified disciplinary action. This is on page six of the publication today. And it's more pain for bread, chips, eaters, manufacturers, presents to MPs the new price list of common commodities that Kenyans will have to pay more for, especially those that are prepared using edible oil. The post suggestions in the national financial estimates seeking to increase edible oil prices. And why climbing Mount Everest is mountaineers' ultimate goal. You can follow this story on page 20, 22 and 23 of it of Travel Wise inside the People Daily today. Mawuka transporters force way into coast, clash with Mombasa County Askaris to access market camps shortly after an Embu court lifts ban imposed by Coast County Governors. That is a story. And ministry revises midterm break dates to June 26 to 28. That is when we'll have a meet and break. And that story is on page 8 of the People Daily today. Mnarawa Babeli UTA is a splash today. Katibu Mku Adishia Wachukulia Hatua Wabunge Chipukizi. And now Kosea Heshima DP. That story on page 2 of the publication. That is Saifa Leo. And also Kalena Mpea Shule Yatolewa. Wizara ya Limu Yasema. Wanafunzi Watanza Likizo Fupi. Yeah. Katikati ya Muhula, Juni 26, badala ya Juni 20. That story on page 2 of Taifa Leo. Kizaza bunge la county ya Kisi. MCS wa county hiyo. Warushia na maneno na hata kutishia kulimana makonde. You have a story on page 5. And Arteta Mpambe wa Pata Tuzo. You can follow the story there on page 20 of Taifa Leo this morning. Let's buckle down to some business where Kenya Power to compensate consumers after blackouts. Good news there. Epro to compel utility to give consumers free tokens. Customers to be compensated within three months. Prepared or prepaid customers will get free tokens from Kenya Power, while those on postpaid plan will see their bills netted off as compensation for irregular or poor quality electricity supply and unannounced blackouts in fresh regulations. The proposed regulation gazetted last week for public scrutiny before adoption by Parliament. Uh, the latest efforts by the Energy and Petroleum Regulatory Authority, EPRA, to compel Kenya Power to improve its supply. You can follow the story on page two of the Business Daily this morning. Kerry makes U-turn on 16% VAT for golf clubs. Annual subscriptions and entrance fees for golf clubs members will from June start attracting a 16% value added tax if the High Court supports the Kenya Revenue Authority in levying the tax, right, for them that love staying off. That is another added, of course, cost as far as carry tax is concerned. FDB's 10 year strategy launch is here, and of course, you can see African Union Commission Chair. Man, that is uh, Musa Faki, Africa Development Bank, FDB, that is FDB Group President, Akiwumi Adesina, President William Ruto, and Treasury Cabinet Secretary Jikudandungu displaying copies of the bank's 10-year strategy 2024-2023.
2033, I should say, during the FDP's 2024 annual meeting at the KICC in Nairobi yesterday. And how military spend was have defined Ethiopia DRC as East Africa's superpowers? SRC suffers second court blow in a week. That is on page four. The Salaries and Remuneration Commission has been dealt a second blow in a week after a court ruled it cannot disregard memorandum or memorandum by national and county government in reviewing pay. Jubilee Holdings paid record 1 billion shillings dividend. Jubilee Holdings Limited has declared a record dividend of 14.3. That is 14 shillings and 30 cents per share amounting to 1.036 billion shillings for the financial year ended December 2023 and hashlers to invest in government bonds with as little as 600 shillings. You can follow the story on page 14 of the Business Daily this morning. We cross over now to Tanzania. Wambaje. For Tanzania, cross-border banking's crucial role in growth. This way, the key message during a panel discussion at this year's annual meeting of the African Development Bank in Nairobi. And this story is on page two. And we have Abdul Majid Nsekela, CRDB Bank Group Chief Executive, saying, we feel great pride and honor to have the opportunity to organize these discussions, or discussions aimed at inspiring financial institutions in our African countries to expand their services beyond the national borders to stimulate economic transformation in the continent and government needs nearly one trillion shillings to repair cyclone rain damage that is on page three that is in tanzania samir's south korea visit set to bring 6.5 trillion shillings on page four of the publication today you can get all the gritty details this morning a new agreement six to boost tanzania's fish exports to us that is on page two of the citizen today in uganda museveni letter on land of flat forces amongst reaction Seven letter on London flood forces amongs a reaction. Burden of proof in a rebuttal to President Museveni's letter demanding answers on a property alleged to be Harris, Speaker of Parliament, uh, played the ball back to the British government, which she accused of forgery to table evidence that the said property is registered in her name and that the Speaker of the Ugandan parliament among you can read the story on page five of the publication today woman expels love or lover after children rebel in defense of dead father that is on page four and navy pilgrims make a joyful entry to shrines and you can see archbishop designate here this is gulu rafael mponi wukuraj leading the faithful on the last leg of pilgrimage to uganda's Mata's shrine in Namugongo, Wakiso district yesterday. The diocese will animate this year's celebration on June. You can follow the story on page two and three of the publication this morning. This is how it looks. And on top also, when hackers take over your WhatsApp account, uh, what do you do? And also you have your DM today, the Lakaras how years of dating strengthened their bond. You can read all about it inside the publication. And why run the central bank lowered benchmark rate? Why run the central bank lowered benchmark rate? That is a probing question on the front page of the New Times. All right. I don't know if there's a problem with that headline, but I'll leave it for you to decipher that. Ben Air has reduced repo rates by 50 basis points to 7% to boost economic growth. Read all about it inside page three of the New Times. The world should redesign global financial architecture. This is what Kagame is saying here, and we can see President Paul Kagame and his Kenyan counterparts, William Ruto, during the 59th annual meeting of the African Development Bank in Nairobi, Kenya, on Wednesday, May 29th, participating in a presidential dialogue on Africa's transformation, the African Development Bank Group, and the reform of a global financial architecture. Kagame told delegates that he the world should come to a point of action to redesign the global financial institutions architecture that story you can follow it inside the publication today and government allocates nine billion rwandan francs to address uh, ravine erosion near refugee camps and rwanda earmarks funds to set up drone operation center that is inside the publication today all right let's see what we have this week on the east african you've been reading this particular Headline, Biden's plan 
to eclipse Chinese influence in East Africa. U.S. elevates Kenya to pivotal position in trade, security and diplomacy with funding for an expressway along China Build SGR military hardware. That relief, that is a story you have on page four and five of the publication. And of course, President William Ruto here uh, holding court with President Joe Biden at White House, Washington, D.C. Uh, during his previous visit to the state. That is the story you can follow inside the publication. Also, one of fights and coming with the UK going to flights, as you say. The run of flights are not coming. With the UK going to polls in July, the migrant scheme may never get off the ground. And you have a story in page 10 of the East African. Somalia town picks up pieces at Dobli, a violence racked region whose rebirth AU forces have midwife. You have a story in page 8 and 9 of the publication this morning. All right, The Economist is carrying out this particular publication, or the headline, I should say, Cash for Kids, Why Policies to Boost Bath Rates Don't Work. Why Policies to Boost Bath Rates Don't Work. And this is the latest. Where next for, for Iran? Where next for Iran? That's a probing question there. And also meet NVIDIA's challengers, how to save South Africa, Britain's election surprise, this is on, of course, inside the publication today. This is the latest copy. We have also the Newsweek as well. How the Gaza war could cost Biden the election. We have a story inside the publication. It's all about the protest vote, protest vote and how the warring factions, the Ukraine and Gaza also can cost him his re-election. And China's, or China parades, Influence in NYC. This is what the Newsweek is carrying in the latest publication. Time has been running this. If he wins, a story there by Eric Ortelesa. That is a Time magazine as well. And China Daily today. This is the global edition. She and Sisi call for easing Gaza tensions. That is what we have here. Beijing, Cairo vowed to promote just solutions to Palestine issue. And it says China and Egypt vowed on Wednesday to work together to promote the de-escalation of tensions in the Gaza Strip and find a just solution to the issue of Palestine. While intensifying their comprehensive strategic partnership, President Xi Jinping and Egyptian President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi made a pledge during their talks at the Great Hall of the People in Beijing. El-Sisi is on a state visit to China and he will attend the opening ceremony of the 10th Ministerial Conference of the China Arab States Cooperation Forum, which is to be held in Beijing today, that is Thursday, strengthening bilateral relations, advancing cooperation in various fields, and uh, enhancing coordination within multilateral frameworks topped the agenda of the leaders' talks. They also exchanged views on international and regional issues of common concern. And you can read the rest of the details inside the publication today into another 20 years of successful cooperation. Uh, that is just an opinion there by Li Cheng Wen. You can actually follow it. IMF raises focus call for, it raises focus, calls for more property sector support. Uh, you can follow the story inside the publication as well. All right, the editor cartoons today. This is what we have inside the Delhi Nation this morning. And it's raining microphones, as you can see. Yeah, drop the mic. And everyone has been talking uh, in every manner, as far as UDA is concerned. We'll run you by that story, of course, momentarily. And uh, this is the current state of play, as far as the party is concerned. And uh, somebody should call the party to order. Let's see what will really pan out. Will there be a new party? We've seen, of course, uh, the deputy president starkly denying that there is forming another party or there is a formation of another party and that is what is happening within UDA. All right, still also, Ozona has picked up that particular tab as well, Riot Act, read by Malala there. Of course, on top of the microphone stand is a wheelbarrow and these are the some of the cabinet secretaries there and the governors who the Riot Act is being read from. And who is sitting under there actually, propping Malala is he the deputy president? I'll leave it for you to, to decipher as well. And this is what Gams has drawn today. Fruits of freedom. And, uh, and we have also, that was in 1994, fruits of freedom. 
and 2024 joblessness, insecurity, corruption, power cuts. This is what actually is the current state of play of South Africa as far as the economy is concerned and the general welfare of South Africa. They were very optimistic in 1994, uh, Fruits of Freedom. All right, we have the sprocket there, which is, uh, it's, a, it's a circular saw, I should say. It's the finance bill, which is cutting you, Monainchi. Is that your way of saving, uh, of saving my life? Right, this is what they're asking, and the MPs with the finance bill right now. All right, it is ready for public participation. Make sure you weigh in as far as this is concerned because it is also affecting you adversely. And that is what it has been uh, drawn inside the People Daily by Stano. All right, those are your dailies this morning. Make sure you grab a copy, of course, to get all the information, get all the wiser as far as the dailies are concerned. And uh, we'll also, just to remind you, be crossing over to uh, Nairobi, that is uh, Safari Park, where we have the national prayer breakfast happening as soon as we also get in touch with our reporter and we've tried to put our ducks in a row, of course, to just give us a, the feel and flavor of what is happening there this morning. Not a lot of action in the studio here, no discussion. We'll be centering our focus there. But let's see what we have for you as far as the stories are concerned, beginning with the story of UDA, where Nairobi Governor Johnson Sakaja has reignited his war of words with Deputy President Rigathi Kashagwa, accusing him of playing victim in his fallout with leaders allied to President William Ruto. According to Sakaja, the Deputy President has been bullying other leaders in the ruling UDA party for the past two years and should not play victim when the rubber meets the road. Sakaja's attack on the Deputy President on the day when the UDA party cautioned two cabinet secretaries, two members of parliament and a governor against attacking President Ruto and Deputy President Gadi Kashagwa, a father fueling whispers of disunity between the country's first and second in command. Ketian's political affairs reporter, David Moloka, has more. Nairobi Governor Johnson Sakaja has yet again hit out Deputy President Rigathi Gashagwa, this time accusing him of playing victim after being attacked by a section of UDA leaders yet he himself has been attacking other leaders since getting into office. Unajua hawezi kuwa wewe unanyanyasa una watu you've bullied people for two years unatajwa wiki moja unalia. For two years unabuli kila mtu hii county ndo huyo. Hii county ndo huyo. Unatajwa wiki moja unazama, unalia. You know bullies are the biggest cowards. Do you know that? Bullies are the maka unenda ziju kwa msitu, ziju wapi. Let me tell you, if you want respect, respect other leaders. Sakaja fired from the hip while addressing more than 7,000 UDA delegates at the Bombers of Kenya in Nairobi in readiness for Friday's UDA grassroots elections at the constituency level. Sakaja is eyeing the UDA chairperson position in Nairobi, but faces stiff competition from Embakasi North Member of Parliament James Gakuya, who is in the deputy president's camp. The Nairobi County boss, however, said he's no longer intimidated by the deputy president. And if you don't respect those leaders, respect the people who put them there. See, no, you. 2027, Sakaja's sentiments have elicited reactions from Gashagwa's allies in the UDA party who have asked him to stop dragging the DP's name into every discussion. He must mature politically and if he has his direct issues with Deputy President, he must solve them out of the public but not in public. That is tainting the Deputy President of Republic of Kenya. The war of words comes on a day when UDA Party Secretary General Cleophas Malala has called out two cabinet secretaries who have been taking swipes at the Deputy President. According to Malala, the two public service CS Moses Kuria and his transport counterpart Kipchumba Murkomen have been going against the constitution which requires civil servants to be politically neutral and should therefore step down from office if they want to engage in political tussles 
or keep off politics. The UDS Secretary General also called out Kapserate Member of Parliament Oscar Sodi, who is a close ally of the President, and Nyeri Governor Mutahika Higa, who recently fired from all cylinders while defending the Deputy President for causing disunity at the helm of the government. Kuwa kiongozi, wakunacha fiongozi wadogo. Usiwe kiongozi, ukiona mutu andaya kutokea pale, unatawa ngonge kichwa. Apana. Ningetaka nistangaza nikiwa hapa kwa kanisa. Madharao yoyote kwa rigathe gachakwa ni madharao ya, ya mulima, kweli uongo. Malala too did not spare Gidhongori MP Gadhoni wa Mushomba, who has constantly been attacking some of the government policies. Your recent conduct has not only undermined the party's unity, but also disrespected the leadership that you pledged to serve. Let this be a stern warning. Desist from such actions immediately. And we are saying that should this behavior continue, the party will take disciplinary action against the above mentioned members. Some of the mentioned leaders have, however, not taken the warnings lying down. Honorable Cleophas Malala, being in the United Democratic Alliance as Secretary General, is just uh, like a square peg in a round hole. It does not fit. And therefore, uh, I think he should hold on to his horses as we uh, carry on with the, with, the, with the elections that are ongoing. And one of the targets must be that we'll be able to get him out of that position. With those mentioned hinting at defying Malala's stern warning, it now remains to be seen what the party's next course of disciplinary action will be. David Muthoka, KTN News, Nairobi. Now, the Standard Group family is mourning the death of Shadrach Miti, a journalist who until his demise was a seasoned reporter on education matter. Miti, an accomplished journalist, died on Wednesday morning, just a few minutes past midnight, at the Kenyatta University referral, referral hospital where he was undergoing treatment. Catherine Imuragate tells the story of a man who dedicated his life to telling stories about our children, our schools, and our education sector. Despite the government's policy on mandatory basic education for all, in Turkana County, the program still faces huge challenges, and the government says it's well aware of that. Thanks to poverty, early marriages, teenage pregnancy, and other retrogressive cultural practices. On Wednesday morning, a few minutes past midnight, Shadrach Miti breathed his last at the Kenyatta University Referral Hospital, bringing to an end an illustrious journalism career that spanned well over a decade. Licha ya serikali kubuni na kupitisha sheria kali za kudhibiti mila potovu na dhalimu ya ukeketaji. The highlight however of this year's examinations will be the decision by the government to allow all candidates who did not register for some reason. Until his untimely demise, Miti was a seasoned reporter on the KTN News Education Desk, a bit that he wholly owned. To present themselves and be allowed to sit the examination. He devoted his career to telling the stories that mattered most in our schools, universities, and educational institutions, earning himself the name Walimu from his colleagues. The highlight, however, of this year's examinations will be the decision by the government to allow all candidates who did not register for some reason. Licha ya serikali kubuni na kupitisha sheria kali za kudhibiti mila potovu na dhalimu ya ukeketaji, ya ilekea mila hii bado inkalipo. He was a true professional who inspired those around him to strive for the highest standards of journalism. Colleagues, remember Mitty as a mentor and friend, always willing to lend a hand or share his vast knowledge. Colleagues and acquaintances continue to mourn Mitty, whose body lies at the Kenyatta University Referral Hospital morgue awaiting autopsy. Tributes trickle in. Notably from Standard Group's broadcast and innovation editor Kizito Namlanda, who wrote, and I quote, I am deeply saddened to learn about the passing of our colleague Shadrach Miti. I have known Miti as a very focused, composed, and dedicated reporter with an unrivaled passion for education stories. 
we will surely miss him. May the Almighty Lord give his family and friends strength during this difficult moment. Ken Mijungu, the deputy broadcast editor, mourned Miti Aza to professional saying, his dedication was unquestionable, professionalism unrivaled. A friendly team member whose contacts in the education sector made all the difference in our work. He was a good man, a perfect gentleman. Augustine Odor, an editor with the Standard newspaper, expressed his shock at the demise of Miti. He eulogized him as a respectable gentleman always willing to learn. Through the ongoing out-of-school enrollment, both state and non-state actors hope to reach to thousands of school-age going children who are still outside there. The colleagues have further mourned the death of Miti, a charming soul describing him as a cool guy, dependable and polite who had respect for everyone. I will say truly he has left a void that will be too big to feel because he was instrumental in enriching our city days uh, docket with his education stories which were truly in-depth. He was a very diligent writer. He was, um, was precise to the point and he always knew what he wanted. Because even in the morning he will always tell you, Korir, I have a story. I think uh, today we can angle this story A, B, C, D, especially because he was dealing with education stories. So he knew what he wanted. He came to the office, he will sit. He will not disturb you, but he will just deliver for you a story. I remember every day, at least I'll go to a story more, yeah, education. At least go bulleting your seven and nine at course story, yeah, education. So he was a guy when you'll go to a We condole with the family and uh, we will stand together with them uh, as we uh, prepare to take uh, Shadrach through uh, his final journey. Shadrach Miti worked at the Nation Media Group for five years until 2016 when he moved to Standard Group. He leaves behind a widow, Roslyn Murugi, and a grade three daughter. The Standard Group has lost a gym, hard to replace. We condole with the family and friends during this difficult period. Fear the well, Mitty. You will be dearly missed, but never forgotten. Uh, Shadrach Miti, we will dearly miss you. A self effacing, very humble, dedicated uh, young man that we've worked together with, uh, of course, uh, since uh, we did our first uh, election, of course, coverage in uh, Kericho. And uh, Shadrach uh, Miti was a very, very insightful, very dependable colleague. And uh, I will dearly miss him myself because uh, I know we used to share a lot. And this is quite a shock that really came from the left. I know signs of ailments uh, that was or ailing that he was undergoing. But uh, this has happened. May the good Lord rest his soul in peace. And we, of course, wish our fam the family our deepest condolences and sincere, of course, uh, also. Uh, I really come slow of words to what you really say about it. We wish the family our deepest con con condolences. Now, there was a major standoff between Mombasa County Enforcement Officers and Mugaka traders at Meritini area just a day after a court in Embu temporarily stopped ban on the use and sale of the plant. This was after several lorries packed with Mugaka arrived at a Bonja area but were stopped. But if it has the clash erupted. Individuals suspected to be the Kenya Revenue Authority officials raided a radio station associated with Governor Abdul Somad Nasir in what he, he attributed to the standoff on the use and consumption of Mogoka. 
to bias change husband bonje area mirichini ni mombasa six lorries packed to the muguka to the brim making way here a few days ago this lorries would have been turned away following a ban on use and sale of muguka by three coast counties mombasa kilifi and itaita taveta when they arrived here they were stopped by county government enforcement officers for allegedly failing to pay cess and as this was happening at bonje in town mombasa governor bulswama nasir's radio rahma was being raided by people purported to be KRA officials who claimed they were on an auction mission over tax arrears the governor's linked the raid to muguka ban in mombasa you came here you are coming in watu wote ambao kwamba nimeongea nao everyone is saying they are not aware my friend kama mmetumwa kuja kutuharas no 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 we are going to take this matter even further hii kitu hii kitu kama mgogando inafanya hii mambo paka muna mnaona ya kwa tutatishika namna hii kwa lazima watu wetu watumie sumu we will continue hata kama rais tumpenda ni rais wetu wa nchi yetu wa Kenya lakini amechukua mwelekeo sio kwa sababu sisi watu wetu wanaumia wana athari yao ni maisha yao afya yao ni muhimu kwa sababu watoto wanakuwa wandazimu wingi kwa sababu wa mungoka. Juzi tu tulisikia Deputy President alikuja hapa. Wakasema watu wa drugs watashikwa. Paka wale wa tujaona watu wa drugs wameshikwa. The Muguka debate has rocked in religious leaders who have faulted President William Ruto over what they called selective fight against illicit and harmful drugs and substances. The clerics were led by Bishop Ruben Katike of St Thomas Anglican Church in Kilifi and Sheikh Muhammad Raki vita na mgoka ukuzwa huko vita vyetu ni kuletwa hapa kwa sababu hapa tumeona watoto wetu wanadhurika wanaacha shule wanadhurika na ndoa zinavunjika na kwa sababu sisi tunaona how to fight mtu yeyote akiona kitu hakimfai akisema hapana ana haki ya kukataa leo tunashangaa kwamba rais wa Kenya ambaye tunamheshimu kwa heshima kubwa kwa kabisa kwamba amekubali kusaidia biashara ya mgoka iendelee nchini Kenya biashara ambayo inamaliza vijana wetu biashara ambayo imetupatia hasara kubwa mbali rasilimali mbali vijana kwamba sahihi wamekuwa mazumbu kama vile statement ilivyosoma hapa tunamwomba mheshimiwa rais hii pesa ambayo amepeana hii 500 million angekuwa amepeana kwa kwa research tukafanyia research pengine inaweza kuwa kwa huu una madawa mengi sana ambayo angekuwa yanasaidia watu labda ni ya kwa operation labda kwa shauri ya akili kama kuharibika a court in embo on tuesday temporarily stopped the ban on muguka and fixed 8th july as the date to hear the case interparte Tobias Chanji KT News Mombasa County Now President William Ruto has asked the National Treasury to reduce by more than half the confidential law vote for his office that of his deputy Rigathi Gachagua and Prime Cabinet Secretary Musale Mudavadi in what could turn out to be political fodder in the days to come though the three officers will face the reduction odp headed by dp gashagwa will be more affected this coming at a time of an ease in the relationship between president william ruto and his deputy ndadi gashagwa ketins senior political affairs reporter tenan karuki has more deputy president ndadi gashagwa's woes seem to be far from over if the latest directive by president william ruto to the national treasury is anything to go by it has emerged that the head of state has directed the treasury to slash funds for his office that of his deputy rigathi gashagwa as well as the office of the prime cabinet secretary musalim davadi the slashed funds are the confidential vote which is a discretionary fund at the behest of the holder of the office and is not subjected to any audits Sources indicate that in the financial year 2024-2025, 
President Ruto has directed the National Treasury to cut off 800 million shillings from his confidential vote from 1.4 billion shillings to 600 million shillings, while that of the deputy will be trimmed from 1.2 billion shillings that he had requested to 320 million shillings. Mudavadi's office, which was said to receive 300 million shillings, is in line for a cut of 150 million shillings. According to the Principal Secretary for National Treasury and Economic Planning, Dr. Chris Kipto, the funds slashed from the three offices will go to the ongoing reforms in the coffee sector, the fight against illicit brew and abuse of drugs and the 10 billion tree planting program. DP Gashagu has been spearheading the coffee reforms and fight against illicit brew. Setao says the president has also directed other government institutions to slash their spending. Gashagua's critics, however, say the move is politically instigated. Gashago, who skipped welcoming back the president from his historic tour of the United States, called for respect for some leaders in the Rift Valley, noting that he helped Ruto win the presidency. Tunaomba heshi makidogo. Musijaribu kutupangia siyasa ya mulima Kenya na kutupangia uongozi wa mulima Kenya. Nyinyi mupange siyasa yenu na uongozi wenu. Atuwezi kusema mambo yetu ya mbae tumekosana kidogo kidogo kwa mikutano ya hadhara na ni mambo machache, pengine ni makoza dogo dogo, tunaweza yatatua yata, yata tukiwa pamoja. Could slashing the DP's office confidential vote budget be a move to cut expenditures in his office or a political move? Daniel Karioki, KTN News. All right, we take a short break right now. You're watching Morning Prime here. Today we do it differently. As I mentioned earlier, we'll be having the national, that is the 21st National Prayer Breakfast, uh, which is at Safari Park. And we have our team down on the ground that will be giving us the feel and flavor of what is happening today. And this year's National Prayer Breakfast is running under the theme, Hope. Hope. We all need hope. Of course, also, the good book says that uh, Expectation that is cut, that is hope, of course, affects the heart, the heart as well. We take a short break. When we circle back, we'll give you more of the stories as we wait for our reporter, Madoka, also uh, to just give us uh, the feel and flavor of what is happening currently. And I'll give, be giving you details from also the program on what to expect from the National Prayer Breakfast.